Hey, welcome back. All right, so we're still talking about Augie Zero. And uh, as I previously, previously had confessed, <coughs> pardon me, it hasn't been a really serious update to this project in a long time. Part of it has been the fact that I realized that it doesn't belong on a Raspberry Pi platform. Um, it doesn't belong on a, on a large platform that has like a whole, you know, Linux distribution that can go down because it is using invalid instructions, which it's likely to do. That's part of what it does, is, uh, is use completely invalid instructions. However, I have figured out a new role for the Pi Zero in the project, and that is gathering data from the little suckers, because the biggest, one of the biggest hurdles um, in this, and probably any, and just in general, genetic algorithms and evolutionary computing in general, but in this project in particular, because it is physical, <coughs> and typically has almost no outputs, you know, like, I mean, it's a dollar fifty processor, it's got like, um, you know, four out, not four pins, it's got four I.O. pins. The 6 n 4 I.O. pins, I think two can do PWM, but this thing doesn't care because it doesn't know diddly about PWM. Um, <coughs> So, hey, I should just start this again. No, okay, we're good. Um, so it's running over there in the left-hand side of the screen. You can see it's been running like a test run for a couple of hours. And, and like evolution, it doesn't evolve towards some sort of, uh, you know, perfect, perfect organism, perfect, uh, you know, Terminator or what, Predator? Yeah, Predator. What was I talking about Terminator? Or Terminator 2. Terminator would also be an issue, but not Terminator 2. All right, so it doesn't evolve so towards some sort of perfection. Instead, it's always um, it's always slightly less than perfect, but it is always doable. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it comes up with an appropriate solution. Um, so it's been getting kind of aggressive because I made the ball really small in there, and I think it actually knocked the battery pack over a bit. I'm just going to leave it down. Let it do its thing. Um, okay, so we were talking about how it's not a traditional program, and that's actually covered a bit by this uh, diagram here, on which again you can find at hackaday.io slash monkey, where this video will be posted eventually, as soon as I get it up there. And, um, all right, so about that. So, and the code, you can get the code there, but it's not the latest code. Why is it not the latest code? Well, the latest code is freaking weird. Here's what happened. Here's the backstory. This is the fascinating part. And actually, it took me about a month to figure out what exactly was going on here. So, before, there's two different versions of the code, really. Is that it? No, that's not. Um, and I don't have the other version up right here. But the other version used, um, Arrays of integers, uh, mostly I think, arrays of integers to keep track of um, its properties, right? So here's the diagram that shows an example genetic algorithm. It's its properties. So you could think of this like being, if you know, if it was one of its children, what would it have? It would have a hair color, you know, it would have an eye color, it would have a thin, a thick, a, a thick or thin skin. You get what I'm saying? Various properties. <coughs> Uh, go go watch like a crash course thing about evolution or whatever. Um, so the example properties and the ones that are referenced in this diagram uh, include a seed, which is a seed to the random number generator. Get it? That's the trick. Yes, I know that was clever. Okay, so the seed to the random number generator is one of the properties of an organism. Um, something called an in register, which is simply a register in which it puts values an out register, which is a register from which it takes values or sometimes does m simple math operations in, inside the register. Another property is the uh, in pin, which is the pin that it is going to read from if it decides to read from a pin. And another property is the out pin, which is a, pr a pin that it will write to if it, if it decides to write to a pin. Now, it, these aren't static because among its instructions are to increment or decrement the in pin or out pin. So part of its own program will change the pins around like during during the run. Um, and this is how a stream of you know random, literally random numbers can, can become a variety of different different behaviors because it, they can be treated differently, right? 
by, the, by changing just a couple of these properties in the GA. So, for instance, if you use the same seed, 8604A, <coughs> in two different versions of the genetic algorithm, of uh, the organism, two different children of the organism say they have the same seed, which this happens every run. Um, the seed is 8604A. When you provide a seed to the random number generator, it will give you the same, the same seed. It will give you the same stream of random numbers, so-called random numbers. So this is how random number generators work. So if you give the random number generator 8604A, you'll get the same stream of numbers out every time. You'll get 36377, 4390, 1C045, 6079, whatever the the sequence is, and it'll be a long ass sequence, right? I mean, like, it depends on the processor, I think, on the uh, Atmel 65,536 or something, whatever. It's going to be a big number. Um, but it's going to, and they're going to be seemingly so called, as we say in computers, quote, random. There isn't any such thing as random in a completely deterministic system, of course, um, like a computer, but what goes for random? In our case, we don't care if it's random. It suits our purposes. It's a long, program available at the recall of only a single number. You get it? If we treat it this way, if I treat all of these random numbers as some sort of instruction, <coughs> then what this really is, is a huge program that I can recall instantly at almost no computing overhead, computational overhead, and, um, well, very low computational overhead, and I can reference it with only one number. Get it? So program 86048 is a big ass program for the robot to run and it can recall it with just that one number by setting the seed. Okay, now there are a few limitations to this. You can't start at an arbitrary position in the program. When it sets the seed, it starts at the top of the program, right? It starts pulling random numbers out of the random number generator. The first one's always gonna be 36377. So it has a no-op, for example. One of its instructions is a no-op. It says, just ignore this instruction. Go to the next one. That means it theoretically has the, has the capability in its, quote, DNA to skip ahead. So, like, if there were, like, you know, 50 no-ops in a row, that's the same as starting at the 50th position, right? Um, just a moment. Anyways, as I said, this whole thing's implemented on the ML AT Tiny 85, um, which you do program in, you can program in C, um, and, but, but there are some limitations, okay? So you don't have, like, for example, well, I discovered, you don't have full classes, okay? Or at least they don't behave properly all the time. So you can't necessarily use classes. Um, completely. What I was doing before, I didn't like doing, but I was like, well, this is working. So I was using uh, integer arrays and I think a couple of other type of parallel arrays, not even multi-dimensional arrays, because that didn't work right. And, um, and that was working, okay, but it was like cumbersome and the code was getting to be a pain in the butt. And I wanted it to be smaller too, because the entire point is for it to be tiny. And it is tiny, it's, I mean, it's, I don't know, I think it has, 64K, maybe less. It has a 400 line program. It's full of comments. So it's almost, as I said, there's almost no program. The entire program is to seed the random number generator and start pulling numbers out of it. That is the program, right? The program is inside the PRNG. Um, that's what it treats as its program. Anyways, um, so I moved to these this class that I started writing, I started writing a class to encompass a genetic algorithm organism, which would be pretty obvious, and the design of it would be pretty obvious when you look at it, because it is an object, um, wherein, you know, all of those genetic properties, or its properties, um, and that seemed to be working, and then something amazing happened. Uh, I should pull it up, but I don't know where it is. Uh, I'll, I'll append it to this or something like that, but there's this video of an early test where it needed to trigger the PIR, it wasn't inside a box. Instead, it was in charge of one servo, and the servo had some styrofoam attached to it. It was only in a certain position that it would trigger the PIR. <coughs> Anyways, I let it run overnight on camera, and it broke, like overnight. I mean, like physically, not the code broke, but 
well, it did. That's another story. But the, physically, it broke. I don't know, like the styrofoam. I can't remember. It like bent or something, and and it couldn't trigger it in the position that I had thought that it would. But it figured out a way to trigger the PIR anyways by like lifting it up and then letting the broken tape like kind of it, it ju would just lean over and eventually it would trigger the PIR, which was weird. It just figured this out overnight. I woke up and it was doing this weird thing. I was like, oh shit, it broke, but it figured out how to do its thing anyways with a broken leg. Um, and that was impressive enough. That's when I knew it was like, shit, this, this works. Why does this work? It still freaks me out. Um, but, but something else happened uh, a little while later. I looked into what was going on there because, because this leader, um, when I started trying to expand this, um, I, I had to go back to that version of it. And what I found out was that it was rebooting right there. It was trying to reference one of the properties of the class. I think it was this float. It seems to be okay referencing um, accessing integers or longs, just, you know, simple data types, I guess, but actually a float is a simple data type. I don't know what the hell the problem is, but, but it seemed like accessing uh, the float or maybe something else, it's hard to tell, um, it reboots the thing. So it was rebooting. What it was actually doing was it would move the, the servo into like a certain position and then reboot because of this bug and it would like restart the program. And when it restarted the program, it would be in the right place to let the tape flip over and, and trigger the PIR. So even with broken software, it works. And that kind of really freaks me out. But <clears throat> it's broken. So I got this new version of the code that has, that has a, a, a class data structure instead, but it's broken and I haven't figured out exactly where it's broken and I haven't fixed it. So, and then I've got a stable version of the code which uses really ugly static arrays and is difficult to work with and that's over on the GitHub address. So, oh, that's cool. So I think I finally brought people up to date, which I've been meaning to do for a long time. So, there would be new code except I found out it's broken. And it took me ages to figure out it's broken because I was like, wait, no, it's working. Look at this thing flipping the styrofoam over. But it turned out it was crashing in the middle of flipping the styrofoam over. And yet, that became part of its, that became part of its DNA too. Like the crashing became part of its DNA. So I don't have a lot more to explore here, actually. One thing that I really wanted to do is not interpret the PRNG as as commands, but rather use the data straight out of the PRNG, say, as character data, and use it to write an, a, an actual onboard program in bytecode, write on board, and then switch execution to that. In other words, there would be no, as we call in these types of programming and evolutionary computing and shit like that, as we would call it, there'd be no supervisor program, right? There'd be no, nothing watching is the problem, which I, that's what I'm saying, is like, there's always a supervisor, and like in an in a AI or something like that, there's some part of the system, you know, you could call it the simulator or something that's actually doing the work of figuring out, you know, is this network working, is this neural network working, is this, you know, uh, are these weights working, is this configuration working, which one of these is best, which one reproduces. This is the supervisor, some program that's actually outside of this, you know, whole AI thing. Um, anyways, if it's crashing, it's like using the supervisor program as part of its program, which is weird. So I thought, well, frick it. Apparently you don't need one. Maybe you don't need a supervisor program. Maybe you don't need a supervisor. I mean, if it dies, well, then it won't succeed, right? But then, uh, it just doesn't make any freaking sense. You know what happened is it just got lucky to where the supervisor got broken in such a way that it was still usable, at least long enough to start doing the work. That's the problem, right. If the very first, it's a bootstrap problem. If the very first instruction, if it broke the very first, its very first instruction 
that it's, it's dead. It's dead in the water forever, right? There's nowhere to go from there. How come this doesn't happen in evolution, does it? Would we know? It's just like, does the very first, does the very first, you know, sequence of DNA ever get jacked up? Yeah, it probably does. Hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> the problem is in some of these, in some of these scenarios, nature in the real world has a solution. There are, you know, if, if some of the baby birds are born, you know, like they're not born because there's just no conception because the DNA screw up, you know, the random mutation was like just, it was fatal. There are many other baby birds, but in a, ro in a scenario where you've sent a robot to Mars, there aren't a whole bunch of other baby birds waiting to maybe not be mutated in a fatal manner. Yeah, so, anyway, I was back to this. So, I did spend a long time looking into this and trying to figure out what the hell was happening. And that's why I haven't released the new code yet, but I think I'm going to have to back off my use of the class. And the funny thing is, it's not even... <coughs> I was thinking, in, in a way, like... <coughs> pardon me, like the, the uh, Pi Zero, it's kind of antithetical to the design. It should be the simplest possible programming. Right? Um, I don't want to give it influence, you know, any kind of influence at all. Um, so like, for example, I was talking about servos. It has no servo library, as you'll see at the top. Um, what it, <coughs> pardon me, what it has, like I said, is the equivalent of a no-op. So there's like a, you know, if it's this number, then just sort of, actually a lot of it is mod. So it's like, if it's mod this number, in other words, if it's equal, um, evenly divisible by 22, and this would be part of its DNA, right? If it's evenly divisible by 22, skip it. That's what it says. It says if the, this number from the um, from the, the next number out of the pseudorandom number generator, the PRNG, is um, evenly divisible by 22, skip it and go to the next one. So it has that. Um, and so as you imagine, that very simple mechanism, think about how you could use that. If if the skip mod, it's literally called skip mod. Say, for example, in one of the organisms, if skip mod is, I don't know, 37, 33, then it's not going to skip pretty much anything, right? Except in, in case it runs across 37, 33, right? Um, whereas if uh, it is 2, if skip mod is 2, it's going to skip a half of a lot, right? It's going to, well, it's going to skip half of them. You, you get it? So skip mod, just a minor change to skip mod, even with the same C and all the other properties the same, right? So like, you know, this organism and its brother, they both have the same C, 86048, so they both have the same string of random numbers, but one of them has a skip mod of 1, and the other one has a skip mod of 42. They can have completely different behavior, right? Um, so, anyways, uh, that's, that's how that works. And as the diagram indicates, every time through the, um, every time through the fitness run, it, and I, I think it does run three, or might, it's configurable in the code, I think it might, might run six. Um, every time through, it picks the best one, the one that has performed the best, that has the highest fitness score, um, that triggered the PIR the most number of times, and expended the least energy. There is a cost for the energy. The supervisor implements all of this scoring. It finds the ones that is that is best. It copies its program. It makes usually one to three minor random changes to its to each of those programs, um, and then it spawns the new generation. Um, actually, I think it changes all except the one that won. It leaves the one that won so that it doesn't. It decreases the likelihood of falling back at the expense of leaps forward. Um, and that's like just a balance you have to make. So, and it just keeps doing this over and over again. That's actually the left-hand side of the diagram that you'll see over there, which again, you can get at hackaday.io slash time master monkey. Um, so, over in the diagram, actually, it goes from generation 0 to 16 to 60, 40, 256. So, it does take a while. As I said, this is not an efficient, quote, efficient, method, but you're talking about an algorithm, I'm, well, from my perspective, I've designed this to
to address situations where efficiency is not your biggest concern. Your biggest concern is like unpredictability or and, and or the things that, that nature does so well, like doing a fantastic job with very few parts and no knowledge of what you've what you're working with and um, and, and being flexible in that, like if you lose a wheel, you know, you keep doing your job, or if you lose a sensor, you find some way, you know. Um, and also if the environment changes, like maybe nothing has changed about the robot, but maybe it's, it's rained and now it's in mud, and the previously efficient means of moving, you know, is no longer working, or maybe it has less power, um, you know, or maybe it has new capabilities, like, you know, maybe, it, uh, um, has become easier, the environment's become easier or something like that, and it doesn't have to expend as much energy to move, then it could last longer. You get it? So, anyways, those are, these are very lofty, obviously, there's very lofty aspirations for this project, and it's a very primitive early stages. Um, really, I consider all of the current incarnations just prototypes. I have been kind of shocked, actually, kind of shocked by how effective they were, and I've, I've played with genetic algorithm simulations for a long time, a long time, like 10 years I've been in the GA, um, I'm just a hobbyist, but I've played with practically everything I get my hands on, and I've written a lot of code for, code for like Breve and stuff, but, um, and, you know, and I've, so I've come up with this mechanism of keeping everything as simple as possible, um, which it works extremely well, but moving it into the physical, um, I didn't expect it to translate so quickly, and it's kind of scary, actually. <laughs> Sometimes the thing freaks me out. Um, so, uh, like I have, so I have an umbrella over here, uh, and I've got like a, uh, I've got a diagram. Like, maybe I'll append it, an image of it to this video or whatever. But, um, and and Arduino Uno, um, I kind of forget what these are called. Twenty five sixty, you know, the big one. I've used a bunch of these anyways, 2564s, whatever. Um, yeah, and uh, it still can use compatible code and, and will give us more feedback. So I was thinking if I could like use the Pi Zero to, you know, like, like receive data from these fitness scores and stuff, because the main, the main problem is I just can't tell often what the hell is going on inside, right? The weird thing is even if you opened it up, like you wouldn't know seeing its properties and its stream of random numbers doesn't really necessarily tell you what's going on. That's the weird thing about this. I thought that would be even more of a factor if I got it to where it just wrote its own internal bytecode. Then you really wouldn't know what the hell you were looking at. Like, what is this program? What does it do? I don't know. So this is like a whole area of this project I wasn't expecting. It's monitoring it and figuring out what it's doing. Like. You can look at it and say objectively, yeah, it's working, but like, why? You know, why? <laughs> does that matter? I mean, does it matter? Does it think it's jiggling? <clears throat> does it think it's jiggling the ball, or does it think that it's getting points for moving the servos? <sighs> does it matter? I don't know. These questions and more are for you, the audience, and. Uh, other entities did parties. So, anyways, I promise we're going to get back to this. Um, I've got the code open, as you see. I got the code open right now. I'm going to have to cut down the, the class um, structure, and which I should, anyways. It should be even simpler. I mean, this thing should be it should be like you know 40 lines of code. It shouldn't need anything at all. I mean, how much does an earthworm need? And look what it does. It does amazing things. So, <clears throat> okay. Thanks for tuning in. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. And that's about all from my side of the house. Uh, as I said, plenty more where that came from at, at hackaday.io slash diamondsmonkey. In the back, you've been watching Drone Sound TV. If you're interested in that, you should go to youtube.com and search for Drone Sound TV. Um, my other stuff, uh, you'll find at youtube.com slash monkey. That includes some weird beats kind of thing, which you might not be looking for. That's all right. You just skip past that stuff, and you'll find some, um, stuff about monkey robotics, which is uh, 
the umbrella under which I put all of this work. Speaking of umbrellas, maybe next time you tune in, I'll have a new code for you for IQ0, which might be operating an extremely dangerous umbrella monster robot. So.